all you T-Rexers excited at the way Terry and his friends change the way people treat them? <laughs> I sure am. Being accepted for who we are and treated with respect helps people gain confidence and achieve things they never thought possible. Really, it doesn't matter what others think because we all have unlimited potential. But having others help us realize it lets us shed some insecurities and tap into that potential to achieve whatever we set our minds to do. Terry and his friends are beginning to learn that now, so let's have a look at what they're doing now. Terry and his buddies, Ozzy and Andy, well, they recently became very popular in school. They never had people come up to them just to say hi before. Uh, they didn't quite know how to handle their newfound popularity and found themselves just bubbling with energy. During recess, they could be seen running and jumping faster than all the other kids, and this got the attention of some certain teachers. The school track meet was coming up soon, and Miss Strasberry, the language arts teacher and high school track coach, took notice of the three boys. After recess, as they entered her class, she asked them if they thought about entering the elementary track meet. Uh, she thought they all stood a very good chance at winning some events, and she looked forward to working with them uh, to groom them for later in high school. They all looked at each other kind of sheepishly as neither of them ever felt they were any good at athletics. After some short consternation, they agreed to give it a shot and see how they would do. Great! You guys meet me at the track after school and we'll see what we can enter you each in. The three youngsters showed up at the track and were a bit intimidated with all the high schoolers practicing their various events. Biff stopped by and greeted Terry with a high five as he was warming up with a one mile jog. Come run with me, Terry. I bet you you'd do great in long distance. Your legs can cover a lot of ground in one stride. Terry started after him and easily kept pace with the older runner. He expected it to be harder, but <laughs> he never lost his breath or even worked up a sweat. He didn't look very graceful as he ran, but Biff was right. He sure covered a lot of ground in a short time. Terry also noticed that while he was running, he wasn't doing any ticks. This excited him more as he made that discovery. Ozzy was recruited by Mr. Spackle to do the triple jump. Uh, with his attention to detail, Mr. Spackle thought that would be the perfect event for Ozzy. He started at the jump line and paced out enough distance for him to build up to full speed before jumping. Ozzy's first attempt wasn't very good, <laughs> but with a couple of minor adjustments and one more practice run, Ozzy had the mechanics down perfectly. He spent the rest of the afternoon honing his skill to perfection. Andy surprised everyone. They all knew how easily he can lose his focus or be hyper. <laughs> Today happened to be a hyper day and Andy was loaded with extra energy. Miss Strasbury worked a lot with Andy on his language skills and she was pretty close to him. So she took him to the hurdles with her and helped channel that en energy into running fast and jumping. She explained it to him very simply and Andy fell right into place. There was enough change in that event itself that Andy never lost focus. For the next three weeks, the youngsters worked on their skills in preparation for the elementary school track meet. The first event was the hurdles. All the participants lined up, and as soon as they heard the starter's pistol, they were off. Andy breezed through the race and beat everyone by five body lengths. After he crossed the finish line, he turned around and <laughs> he watched the next contestant do the same. He couldn't believe it. Ozzy's event was next with the triple jump. Uh, he didn't have anyone to race, but he had to jump the farthest in order to win. He was allowed three tries at it, and he needed all three. He was very meticulous with his preparations, but on his first two attempts, he scratched. The distance was great, but having scratched, he still didn't have a qualifying jump. As he paced out his lead up, he pictured everything in his mind. He got set and started off. When he hit the jump line, he started perfect. No scratch this time. He hopped, then he skipped, then he jumped as far as he could. 
When he landed, the officials pulled the measuring tape, and Ozzy just set a school record. Finally, Terry's turn came up with his event being the one mile run. When the starter shot the pistol, everyone took off. Terry thought he was going too fast and would tire out because everyone else was so far behind him after the first lap. He slowed down for the next two laps so he could make sure that didn't happen. He was still pulling away from everyone though. On the last lap, Biff caught his attention and told him to go all out. So Terry increased his speed and he actually lapped the last place runner. He glided to an easy win. Although he felt bad for poor Charlie, that last place finisher, in a show of sportsmanship, he ran alongside Charlie for his final lap. The school was bustling with cheers for all the contestants as they did their best and encouraged each other. The participants all took a victory lap around the track, showing their appreciation to the crowd. With all the commotion going on, someone forgot to remove one of the hurdles out of the way. As he was waving to the crowd, Terry didn't see it, and he crashed over the hurdle. The crowd went silent as they watched what happened. Biff ran out to help his young friend. When he got to Terry, he knew something was wrong as Terry wailed in pain. Oh, my knee, shouted Terry. Mrs. Slocum and the other paramedics arrived and loaded him into the ambulance. At the hospital, they identified that Terry blew out his ACL and would take quite a while to recover. His friends all tried to cheer him up, but Terry couldn't smile as the pain was just too much at the moment. What was he going to do? Sports and exercise are one way many people with Tourette's and other disorders gain some relief from their sy symptoms. There are many famous sports figures who have Tourette or others like OCD and ADHD. By finding that special event or skill, they're able to channel their focus and do some amazing things while at the same time learning how to gain control over some of the symptoms that are affecting them. It's certainly not a cure, but to many, it's a welcome diversion that they learn to enjoy. There are many other things besides sports that offer that same relief and provide others with some great enrichment. Music, writing, and acting are just some of the things that people discover and become great at. Be open to giving many different things a try and tap into something that may surprise you. Here's that fist bump, guys. This is Megalodon saying bye for now. Later, tater.